my name is Kat, and I now have more tapestries than I have rooms in my apartment. It's fine. So today, I have some book reviews to share with you guys. I usually like to do these videos when I have about five books to talk about, but I have seven to talk about today because I've been reading more than I've been filming. I haven't filmed in three weeks, so let's just get into it. Let's get started. Got a lot to cover. Let's do this. So the first book I have here is Little Monsters by Cara Thomas. Ooh, look, it's like kind of matchy-matchy. This was the Booksplosion Book of the Month pick for August. We are working with Random House on this one. This is a young adult thriller slash mystery novel. We follow a girl named Casey who has moved to the small town and sort of become friends with these two girls. I say sort of because their friendship is kind of complicated and they end up not inviting her to this big party and then one of them doesn't come home from the party. She's gone missing and Casey finds herself in the middle of this investigation and her complicated friendships and complicated family dynamics are somehow at the center of it all. I was very pleasantly surprised by this book. Like, I don't read a lot of thrillers and mysteries, and after reading this, I was like, why not? This was great! Like, the pacing of the book and all the relationship dynamics and just the whole mystery, the whole story was so compelling and engaging throughout. At first, it's just like, ooh, what's going on? mysterious. I'm intrigued. But then as you get deeper into the story and all the complicated relationships, it starts to get so much more intense and is was just such a wild ride. So yes, I would definitely recommend this book, especially if you like thrillers, mysteries, uh, true crime kind of stuff. Th this would be right up your alley. And if you've already read this book and you're interested in hearing some more spoilery discussion, then I definitely recommend checking checking out the Booksplosion live show because we had a pretty great chat about this. So yeah, I'll link that down below. The next book I have here is All Rights Reserved by Gregory Scott Katsoulis. And I received this book from the publisher Harlequin Teen, who I'm also working with this month. Basically, this book takes place in a world where literally everything is like trademarked and copyrighted and you can't even speak words without having to pay for them. You have to pay like the copyright owners for every single word you say. And not just words, nonverbal communication too, like shrugs and nodding and hugging and kissing. Our main character is a girl named Speth who acknowledges that she does not have a good name, but it was cheap, so it was all her family could afford to name her. In this world, you're allowed to speak and communicate freely until you are 15 years old, and then you have to start paying for all of your communication. And Speth is about to turn 15, and as sort of a you know, rite of passage, she is going to deliver the speech, and it's going to be like her first paid spoken words. But something happens that completely rattles her right before she's supposed to give her speech. So when the time comes, she decides she's not going to give it and she takes a vow of silence. Like she's not going to speak illegally, she's just not going to speak at all. And she ends up kind of sparking this movement, this rebellion against all the trademarks and copyrights and conspiracies. My favorite part about this book was definitely the world building and just the speculative aspects of the situation. Like this book definitely gave me a lot to think about. Like I'm, I still find myself thinking about it just randomly. The world here is really fascinating and unique, but it's unique in a way that I was still able to draw a lot of parallels between this world and our world, and that really grounded it and, and just made it hit closer to home. It kind of reminded me of Feed by M.T. Anderson a little bit, with like the corporations and the, the ads and the consumerism and the ideas that it kind of played around with. As a creator on the internet, copyright is something that I kind of have to think about a lot 
and this this book just painted a very scary future for copyright. Oh my gosh. I would say that this is more of an idea book than like a character book. Like Speth was a fine main character, but I didn't feel like super strongly about her. I was a lot more invested in just like the situation and the world and the ideas in general. If you're at all intrigued by the premise, the concept of this book, then I would definitely recommend giving it a shot because it's such an interesting read and like the premise, the atmosphere, it really delivered. The next book I have here is Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo. Now I'm gonna be pretty brief talking about this one because it is the second book in a duology so I can't like get into too many synopsis details because of spoilers. And also this was the Booksplosion book of the month pick for July. So there is a long spoilery discussion live show that I will link down below if you want to check it out. I loved this book from the writing to the world to the the story the action the characters just everything everything about it is good so yeah read it if you haven't if you want to if you need more convincing i'm gonna do an updated favorite series of all time video and this is gonna be in it so i'll talk more about it then stick around the next book i have here is the Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee. I feel like I've been talking about this book a lot lately, but like it's fine because I really loved this book. Basically, we're just following this boy named Monty who is like a roguish bisexual lord of the 1700s and he's about to go on a grand tour of Europe and just travel around the continent with his younger sister and his best friend Percy who he is kind of secretly in love with. Naturally, their travel plans kind of go off the rails and there's lots of chaos and shenanigans and romance and it was just such a fun charming book. I love Monty so much. Like he's kind of a brat and he's kind of melodramatic, but I was living for it because he's so funny and he's still so charming and charismatic that he kind of gets away with it and he does grow over the course of the book and start to become like a better person and it was just, it was so good. I love Monty. <laughs> now there were some aspects of the plot that felt kind of shaky and like some of the things that happened at times were a little bit uh, like kind of ridiculous and campy, but like it worked for the book and I love that kind of stuff. So I, I was I was still really into it. There was adventure and romance and Monty getting himself into trouble and it was, it was, it was, it was, it was great. It was great. The next book I have here is When Dimple Met Rishi by Sonia Menon. This is about a teenage girl named Dimple who just wants her parents to kind of lay off their search of trying to find her the perfect Indian husband because she has other things she wants to do right now. She wants to go to college. She wants to get into app development. When her parents agree to let her go to like the summer camp tech program, it feels like such a win for her. Then we have our other main character, a boy named Rishi, who is all for tradition and like he's totally open to his parents setting up an arranged marriage. His parents have been talking with Dimple's parents and trying to plan something. And Rishi thinks Dimple is in on it. But when he gets sent to the same camp program and he introduces himself as her future husband, he learns she has no idea. <laughs> this was so cute and so much fun, especially in the first half. Like I loved Dimple and Rishi separately and together and it was, it, it, was, it was very cute. I also really loved seeing the Indian culture, the Indian American culture. Like Dimple and Rishi both come from very similar backgrounds, but they both have very different opinions on those backgrounds and their culture and traditions and stuff. And I found that so interesting and such a fresh dynamic. While the romance between Dimple and Rishi was very cute, I really liked the relationship. I do still wish we had gotten more about this camp program that they were participating in. Like there wasn't a lot about the app development and like the tech and, and that was something that really drew me to this because it sounded really fun, but we didn't spend as much time on that as I would have liked. Also in the second half, I felt like the story went in a couple weird directions as we started getting like involved in friends and family drama and I wasn't as interested in that. Like I, 
I loved Dimple and Rishi. I wanted more of them. I, di I didn't really care what was going on with their friends. Overall though, it was still a very fun and cute read. It was a really fast read too. So if you're just looking for like a lighthearted rom-com type book, then I, I would totally recommend this because it'll, it'll just fill that little rom-com hole in your heart. And finally, I have here The Hidden Oracle and The Dark Prophecy, books one and two in the Trials of Apollo series by Rick Riordan. What a mouthful. If you're new to Rick Riordan's books, this is not the place to start. It takes place after the Heroes of Olympus series, so I do recommend reading that one first. And before you can read the Heroes of Olympus series, you should probably read the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series. So you have 10 books to read ahead of these two, but then you should definitely pick up these two. Basically, the god Apollo did something that deserves punishment. And his punishment is to be turned into a mortal 16 year old boy and have to deal with that. I don't think anyone's gonna be surprised to hear that I loved these books a lot. I just enjoy Rick Riordan's humor so much. Like I just think these books are so funny. Like I understand the people who criticize his work for being like repetitive and following a formula because the, the stories do to, to a certain degree, but there's so much life and spark and uniqueness in each page with the humor and the dialogue. And it's just, I, I, I love Rick Riordan's books. I love his books. This series is particularly fun because of Apollo. I actually read these books right after I read Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue and Apollo and Monty had so many similarities and I love them both so much. I was just, I was living for it. Like if this is gonna be a trend, if sassy, melodramatic, bisexual main character is a trend, I'm into it. I'm really into it. All right, there you have it. Those are the books that I recently read and my thoughts about them. And that's gonna do it for this video today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you have a wonderful night and I will have another video up soon. So I will see you then. Goodbye.